We hielden dit interview in Californië. En we nemen nu afscheid van Las Vegas in Nevada. Actuele spelletjes. Alpha Worlds. We gaan praten met Bruce Damer, een van de mensen achter de ontwikkeling van virtuele spelletjes, 3D spelletjes op het internet. We bezochten hem in Bol, Californië, ergens in de buurt van San Francisco. En we praten met hem over virtuele werelden, virtuele spelletjes en Alpha Worlds. Yeah. Bruce Damer, you are a man who designs worlds, but different kinds of worlds. Yes. Uh, should I look at the camera? Yes. Yeah. Uh, or me, it doesn't matter, but the camera is there. And uh, so, uh, I, I'll start again. Bruce Damer, you are a man who designed worlds. You are a utopist in the cyberspace. Yeah, in, in fact, um, what I represent is an organization of people who build worlds and serve them out on the internet for ordinary people on the internet to come into and they're three-dimensional uh, or two-dimensional graphical or visual worlds. I, I, I can imagine that like a, a landscape or a city where people uh, stay in the city, stay in that landscape, they can move mm -hmm. and I come across people and you call them avatars. What, what is an avatar? Uh, an avatar is an old Hindu, actually probably it's a Sanskrit word meaning the embodiment of God on earth. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is the name that was given by, I believe, William Gibson to, to the digital persona, uh, what you would look like in a, in a three-dimensional or two-dimensional digital space. Mm -hmm. So you look at an image, which is really like, uh, at the moment, it, it looks like a bit like a puppetized figure, uh, which has been given uh, looks. We look at male and female, but we also look at strange creatures. So people choose an avatar to be in this world. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now in the old days, when we were playing uh, Dungeons and Dragons, we, we had only a screen with text. Yes. Then we had computer games with graphic screens, where we would pick a person from a range of people that was just limited. But now in these worlds, you can both create the world and the people in it. Yeah, and in fact, uh, with uh, we had HTML and the World Wide Web, which was a two-dimensional view of the internet and now it's going three-dimensional with this virtual reality modeling language VRML which has come out and people are creating their own home spaces in the net which they draw people into for parties or for, for mostly for socializing. Let me try to make this clear. People are not only making a home page but in the home page where you could have a say a picture of your real house they now have a, a home tree, world. A three-dimensional at first it will look like a picture because it's still on the screen but you can go into it and move around mm -hmm. and they people can create this world like uh, the real world or they can make anything up that's right and in fact in some of the worlds that, that we've been involved with creating we've created towns a virtual university people have created abstract worlds full of uh, mm -hmm. living digital organisms this goes back to what the, the metaphor the people from the digital city the digitale stad amsterdam use yes, yeah. of making a city on the screen. Exactly. That's a metaphor like we used a desktop metaphor in the past for the computer where you had a like you know a place to throw away stuff and other things. But now it's a real environment, real worlds. Yes. yes. Yeah. Uh, what is the difference between this world and say a virtual reality world as we Well the virtu virtual reality was the sort of pre precursor of this and that it helped develop a lot of the technology but in in these worlds you don't need to have special glasses or an immersive system, special hardware. It's just running within, inside a window on a normal PC and a normal internet connection. But you don't see like a 3D image like you would with a VR hel helmet. But you, you in fact, because you actually see and can navigate through the scene. Yeah, so through the movement, you can experience the 3D, the stereo effect. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And your your mind kind of believes that you're moving. It's like you're looking through a window, window pane, or through a car, in fact. The car's windshield and you're moving forward. You can see us moving past these people. Mm -hmm. So you find, actually, that 
the three D helmet, sort of the surround effect. The immersion uh, yeah, idea. It, it's good, but it can also cause a lot of psychological sort of vertigo problems, nausea problems. So this is kind of a, a happy medium. In yeah, a it's sense. flat and it can be done on normal computers. Normal computers without any, any equipment. Now, and, and a new thing is also in, in the VR we've seen so far, it was hard to create your own worlds. But here it's relatively easy to make your own world or an, exten an extension to an existing world. Yeah, in fact, you can use... Uh, many of the worlds allow you to pick up a piece that you like, pick up part of a building that you like and, and carry it and place it down in a spot that you've called your own. And so you're going to recreate a little, a little mini world for yourself. Exactly, and we, we, created a, we created a town called Sherwood Forest Town, which I can simply from a web... It refers a little bit to Robin Hood. <laughs> a, a little to Robin Hood and a little to the fact that the Luddites came from that part of, of, of England. And the Luddites were the people who in the 1700s were fighting against those machines, like spinning machines, and that replaced humans. That's right. And they, there was like a revolt against machines. And so, so, so we felt, uh, here's our Sherwood town, we're at the gate now. Uh, we felt that if there was going to be a revolt against this new medium, it, it might be appropriate that it happen inside our own town. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so this is, anyway. So you would allow revolution as long as it's on your turf. Yes, <laughs> that's right. So th yeah. this is the... The Sherwood Forest town, and this is the street that we're on. That's it's a our pretty, neighbor. pretty good rendering in the background. Th those are real pictures that you used? Uh, yeah, that's actually a picture of uh, Sonoma Valley, which is the wine country in Northern California. And mm. if I travel along this path, I'll come to a cabin where we do a lot of meetings, a lot of anthropologists in our organization, so we're studying the emergence Wait a minute, not only do you create your avatar and you move in those worlds but you have actually meeting places where you go yeah we we actually once a month have a worldwide meeting in the town because the town is being built by people from all over but for four continents when, when i say worldwide how many people come there uh 20 to 30 usually yeah and, and they talk about specific uh, subjects they talk about how the community looks um uh, the future of the community they have sort of uh, discussions there are certain rules in the, the community? There's rules in the community. We have a mayor, we have a newspaper. What interests me at the moment, can I run around naked there? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> if you could, if you built a naked avatar, yeah. yeah. Did anybody do that? <laughs> uh, probably, in fact, in the Netherlands, uh, there's a Dutch undergraduate student who's built thousands of illicit avatars that people use. <laughs> and a lot of them are copyright violations, like, like Michael Jackson. So that's a Dutch contribution to, ver to cyberspace. <laughs> Probably did a few naked women but too. Yeah, but just so you have a few rules there and about not, uh, you know, like, like spamming or stuff like that not, is not allowed. Not destroying each other's property. Like that we're flying over a farm now that was built by. It's a beautiful construction, and we wouldn't want anybody to come and vandalize this. So, but is there a rule that you could say, hey, I like your flowers there, but I found this very beautiful thing. Could I add it to your thing? And yes. Then, yeah, yeah. So yeah. there's rules about how to deal in cyberspace. Yes, yeah. And are about there deals about uh, financial arrangements? Uh, yeah, in fact, uh, there are many of these worlds that have whole economies and they have trade, trade in body shapes, uh, trade in, in, in... Yeah, I could imagine some, a game designer wants a piece of your, of your uh, environment and says, can I use this for a picture or for an advertisement? And he could actually buy that with real money? Uh, well, sort of cyber dollars. Yes, so in internal internal dollars. Yeah, that, so it's interesting. There's a, there's an economy going on. There's there. an economy going on. Is there a psychology going on there? Is do you think avatars? Now the avatar might be different from the real person. A man might be a, a, a yes, woman. Yeah. Everybody probably looks young and happy and 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 sexy. Uh, there there are a lot of there are a lot of uh, gender bending going on. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you just gender bending means. You take you the take opposite a, sex. take the opposite sex, and there was a there was actually a wedding in here, and it was a good thing that uh, I can bring up some of the pictures. There was an, a fantastic wedding with two hundred people in attendance as avatars, and two people who had met in this world decided to be married in it, and they and they were both gender benders or something. No, it would have been terrible if, if both of them <laughs> come out if like both that. of them had been in had been gender bending by mistake. <laughs> That actually has happened in mud environments. Yeah, yeah. But here, here, for instance, is a scene where the priest, who's an avatar, is actually 
show uh, saying, I now pronounce you man and wife. So there are rituals there. There Part are. Part of society is always rituals, and you have rituals in cyberspace. Yes. Now, yeah. Do you think they have a value beyond this screen? Uh, in a sense, they do because uh, we've. There, the value really is that you, people aren't on under limits. They're not under the limits of the family they come from. Their economic, although they have to have, be obviously be able to afford to have an internet connection. But for for an example, there was a boy from somewhere in the Midwest of the U.S. just a, who was building. Uh, we actually were traveling through the world, and we found this Gothic cathedral, and by the Gothic cathedral was a post box, which allows you to uh, send an email to the builder of the cathedral, or to the builder of it. We, we sent an email saying, that's wonderful, this is a beautiful construction, you know, who are you? And, mm -hmm. and we were with an architect who was traveling with us through, through this cyber cyberspace. Space. And they said, well, which school of architecture did you go to? Because this is just a magnificent piece of work. And we got an email back the next day saying, I'm 11 years old, I, didn't, I hardly go to school anyway. <laughs> and so this this 11-year-old kid had picked up his, his parents' picture books and studied them. He was fascinated, and he decided that when he got into this realm, he could build this yeah. structure, so, so he did. And really stepping outside the normal limits of having to go to school and learning, you know, arithmetic language and whatever, people have more freedom, in a certain sense. In Because they're limited to the screen, they're limited to the VRML or another language, they're limited to the capacity of their machine. Mm -hmm. um, so it is creativity within a within certain play field. Yeah, it's sort of a fishbowl reality, and but it's expanding quite rapidly because you're now getting voice, you're getting sort of high-speed performance, so you can actually paint on surfaces and create art of yeah. a sense. Uh, and it's starting to get broader and broader culturally. There's now work on doing gesture. There's work on doing facial expression. Uh, the voice Isn't there the danger that people would kind of get lost in this different reality and, and, and cop out from normal life? Oh, there is. There, there very much is. There are people, perhaps like myself, who are susceptible to this, who spend you know, tens of hours a week in this. There's a certain addiction to Yeah, there's a certain addiction. In fact, one of the members of our, our Sherwood Forest Town is a psychotherapist, and he built a clinic called Therapies <laughs> Are Us, for people with addiction disorders in, in this, in in this, this medium, in this thing, yeah. but of course they have to go into the medium to meet him yeah, yeah, virtually yeah. to get therapy, so it sort of defeats the purpose. Of yeah, yeah. <laughs> Coming back to those rituals, people like uh, Mark Pesce believes that, that certain rituals, and, and he comes from a pagan background, are actually very powerful in cyberspace and have an effect on the real world. So he has done rituals in physical spaces with four computers on the corners and doing mm -hmm. his, his pagan uh, craft thing, uh, but also rituals on the screen. Um, well, in fact, a couple of interesting anecdotes. The Pope has ruled that you can be blessed as long as it's real time through any medium. And one of our members is a rabbi from Jerusalem. And that ra he's, he's looking at Judaism in the, f in the future. And can you have can you have shared worship? Can he build a synagogue in here and people come and to it? would come and would actually, yeah, I think yeah. that, that, that yeah, it makes sense. Uh, but he could therefore perform rituals and say, uh, let, let's take this example of the Roman Catholic uh, confession. That would be possible. It would be possible as long as it's not delayed in time. As okay. long as so it's the actually church happening. Would accept that as a, the as church, a real confession? The church will accept that as a real confession. Yeah. Now, the theories about rituals uh, coming from people like Rupert Sheldick say the repetition and the place will create a certain radiation, what he calls anthropomorphic fields mm -hmm. uh, or morphogenetic fields, you know, from people or from things. And they have a certain force and that's why rituals actually work. You do the same thing over and over again and after a while it, uh, it, it, it matches in with, with the fabric of reality. Would you mm -hmm. think this stuff, which is basically little electrons on a silicon plate going on around in your Pentium chip and in your computer and maybe bit streams all over the world that they have an influence on reality. Well, in, we're just starting, in fact, we're probably one of the first organizations to start really regular experiments with this. We, we meet monthly in this town and we found, I, we've been surprised, every month we've done this, we're surprised that people come back. They come back and they see that as, a, they're starting to see that as a, as a part 
as a of part their of their of spiritual, their, maybe, maybe even religious experience. Yeah, come and the, here and talk you're, about it. You're joining. See, you, as with every ritual, it's done within a tribe. It's done with a common community, mm -hmm. and um, the people who use these environments identify each other by the fact that they're in them uh, as being part of a unique experience or a unique tribe. People who believe that this is something new and exciting, so that they sort of have formed, they've clustered together and they formed this, this interest group and they'll, they will come back and meet every month b because they're really committed to the medium. They feel special because they're part of it. Is there a danger that cults would form this way? People that have their own little world where they do their own special thing? Oh, in, in a sense they already have because in, in the Mud and Mu communities, which there are hundreds, there are definitely cult-like some of them. Are there regular churches that use this medium? As you said, a, a rabbi who wants to set up a synagogue? We haven't seen that yet. Uh -huh. Haven't seen that. Okay, Bruce. So, you are with the whole organization involved in the development of what you would call virtual worlds. Yeah. In fact, our membership are many of the companies that have built these environments for the internet community, and then the rest of the membership are the people who use the environments and social scientists, and anthropologists who study community. And so our organization is like a focal, focal point on, on this emerging medium. So we hold conferences, etc. So you're really part of the uh, world, well not the world, the virtual world government, governing what's happening there. Or we're, we're, the, we're the kind of uh, the town square where people come together and say, did you see that? Did you see that there's a new town that's, that's been formed in Sparta? And there, we're sort of a meeting point, a milling point, a marketplace for these new cities or these new worlds that have come So up. people who would like to know more about um, the virtual worlds and the worlds out there on the internet in a 3D form, they should look at HTTP www.secon.org yeah. and or send you emails at yeah. bdamer at secon.org. Yes. Ja, dat was een bezoek aan in Alpha Worlds, Virtual Reality, via het internet en zijn organisatie Contact Consortium. En dat allemaal in de bossen van Californië.